Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. This is for you, the PRS Lunar Ice Silver Sky. How did I get it so fast and so early? I had to pay a lot, a lot, a lot of money for this thing. <laughs> Believe me, I did not purchase this brand new from a shop. I had to pay the first scalper that I saw listed because most people aren't expecting to get these until like the earliest of February. I've seen a lot of pre-order dates all the way into like March, April, sometimes even later within the year. So instead of $26.99, I had to pay $5,125 for this guitar just so we can document it and be the first to create a quality video with this thing. So here it is, it comes in a gig bag. We talked about this last year when they introduced the Nebula, the first limited edition finish that PRS and John Mayer did together on his signature guitar. So you can check out that video if you wanna learn a little bit more about like my first impressions to the PRS Silver Sky, as well as if you just wanna see that color and everything. But today it's all about the new limited edition finish because last year the Nebula sold out about within 24 hours and they only made 500 of them. This time they made 1,000. And I thought for sure that would, you know, deter some scalpers from, you know, buying these things up. And uh, maybe we wouldn't see such crazy prices because today the market for the original Nebulas usually sits between 4,500 to 5,500. So there is a set market. They didn't deflate after they came out. And that's kind of exactly what happened with this thing. So you got scalpers buying these things up and the whole 1,000 run <laughs> sold out within like 12 minutes. But here we go, enough talking. Let's see what Lunar Ice looks like. Well, would you look at that? It just kind of looks blue. Oh, this is interesting. That's something new. They've got a, a Velcro pad over top of that. Oh, that's actually quite ingenious, PRS. The reason why they did that is they don't want this poking through the top of your gig bag. So that kind of protects against that. I don't think the initial iteration had that. So here we go. Uh-oh. I think my strap button got sank into the guitar. I could be wrong, but this is what it looks like in the flesh, the lunar ice finish. It's kind of like a light purple metallic that moves into like a very light lavender color. I was saying at the initial release of this, I didn't think it was different enough as compared to the original Nebula. But now that I have it in person, it is certainly a lighter color. Now, personally, I think I like the Nebula better, just based off of first impressions, but I'm more of like a dark finish guy anyways. But if you happen to like lighter colors, definitely go for it. But the main topic today is mainly how I feel about a maple fretboard on the Silver Sky. Now, if you're not familiar with the Silver Sky, of course, you can check out the other video, but it's John Mayer's and PRS's idea of a Stratocaster, but reimagined and amped up. I really enjoyed my Nebula. I thought it was a fantastic guitar, but I'm seeing just right away some interesting specs on these guys. Like it's not actually just a straight up maple neck, like sometimes fenders will have, where they'll just put the frets in the neck and the neck is also that. This appears to actually have a very thin fretboard over top of that. So we'll have to take some dimensions on the workbench. I wasn't expecting that. And of course we get the uh, PRS scarf joint that these things are known for. But kind of a cool thing about this one, this was at least one of the first nine left out into the public. I mean, you can see the date right here, 11321. This is one of the earliest ones. And that's why I paid such a big premium for it. But you can check out the original paperwork that the guy was sent from the dealer where they were allotted eight of them. And this was the very first one to be listed that actually has it in stock. And I kind of wanted to address that too, because there were some rumors going around that PRS and John Mayer were really upset and they're having all the pre-sale listings pulled on Reverb and eBay. No, that's actually my fault. <laughs> I report each and every single one of them because it's against Reverb's rules. It prevents somebody from getting scammed because somebody could just, you know, make a pre-order list 
listing saying, oh yeah, I got it. Take your money and then you're waiting a year and then by then it's too late for any type of buyer protection. So if you are ordering one of these from a scalper, be very careful. Maybe wait until they actually have it in stock. That way you're not paying scalpers pricing and then you don't actually even get the guitar. So okay, let's go ahead and throw this thing on the workbench, take an individual look at its parts and specs, and then we'll get to that playing demo of the new Lunar Ice PRS Silver Sky by John Mayer. By the Lunar Ice, you can see the two different colors right here. You got that purple, and then you got the blue over here. It kind of turns a little bit of a greenish color hue too. I definitely see what they're going for here. So inside here, I mean, it's a pretty basic Stratocaster. They actually tell you what pickups are in them right on the outside here. It's the PRS 635 John Mayer style pickups, and that's the same for the neck, middle, and the bridge here. Stock from the factory, you do have a little plastic coating over top of this, so you can remove that if you want, or you can leave it on there so it kind of protects against some scratches. But on the inside of things here, we can see our exposed alder body in here with a bunch of date stamps. So this one was made November 12th of 2020. That's further proof that this is one of the earliest ones made. And there's that mysterious 12 and a half there again. That was in the My Nebula as well. You can see that same little route that they do right there. A few other signatures for sign off. And all the other barcodes you can see here with matching serial number. You also got one on the side over here. And you can see just how thin this finish really is. And here's where you can see that the neck joins to the body. As far as the back side of the electronics here, nothing too fancy. We can once again see that the middle one is labeled in red. And we just get standard wiring here. And there's the marking on the pots. Unfortunately, I don't see what they're rated, but I can definitely tell that this thing was finished not too long ago. I mean, you can smell the lacquer on this thing or whatever finish they use for it. It reminds me of being in the art room when they're doing like the uh, pottery stuff. But just in case this is your first PRS Silver Sky, they actually have a domed output jack. That's supposed to help guide you to where you're supposed to be. It's also just kind of an aesthetic choice. And they also route out these little circles. That way they make sure every single one of them is put on straight. And inside here you can also see the finish. And it's just uh, your standard output jack. It's a master volume with two tones. Now what makes PRS's knob special is their low friction. So they feel like cheap pots, but they actually just function really extremely well. I'm honestly not a big fan of it, but I think that's mainly because I'm used to the other ones. So I'm sure you could easily get used to these things. But I find that they wiggle a bit too much for my taste. But I have always liked the switch tip that they use here. It reminds me of like those blob characters. They stay on, they're not too in your face, and they're easy to move. But as far as pickup readings go, 5.62 in the bridge, middle position, 5.65, and the neck, another 5.62. So it seems like they overwind the middle pickup just a little bit. Now for in between, 2.84 and 2.84 for these two as well. Moving on to our tremolo here. So it's just the vintage style six saddles and they're steel saddles and they just secure to the body using all these screws. Something that's kind of cool about this trem system that I missed and or misunderstood last time is the way that you actually put the bar in. So I used to think that you just put the bar in and it, that's just how it goes. But no, there's a little Allen key over here that adjusts your tightness. And that's really easy to access right here on the top. Most Stratocasters or S-type guitars, they'll have that somewhere hidden underneath there but you couldn't actually get to that on this particular one because they got the wood block in <laughs> yeah so i actually really like that feature but honestly when you get your bar set where it needs to go i mean usually you don't change it too much but man this thing's starting to really capture the light and capture those colors i'm surprised they didn't give this a sky theme because they went with the lighter colored fretboard on this you got the white right here it kind of seems angelic and now i'm sure you guys are curious did mine actually get damaged in shipping looking at this one it doesn't look like there's any impression on the finish all you're seeing right there is like the wax that they use to put it in but down here you can see a light impression so i'm guessing mine did get slightly damaged in shipping but honestly Honestly, it's not a big enough of a deal to really worry about the insurance claim. The strap button just sits a hair lower than normal. But thankfully it didn't crack the finish or crack the body or anything like that. And now unfortunately this is where the video is just going to take a downturn. 
I don't like this guitar. You just based off of my first impressions, touching it, haven't plugged it in yet. You know, I liked the Nebula. I th I was all for it. It changed my opinion on this guitar forever. This neck is terrible. I hate it. It's a satin finish because I loved the Nebula neck because it had, you know, a glossy finish. It had a flamed neck. That, that was an anomaly. But this, it's, it's all satin. So if you like satin finishes, you're going to love this. But for me, when it comes to maple fretboards, you need a lacquered finish. That's just how I've always felt. So if you feel the same way as me, don't bother getting one of these. I was kind of let down by that because I didn't see that in the spec sheets anywhere calling it a satin finish. And personally, I really liked that rosewood fretboard on that other one. It was a little bit thinner than normal, but it was nice and oily. It felt great. This just dries my hands out, but that's just me personally. But here we'll take a look. You can see it's actually a maple fretboard on top of a maple neck. You can see that small slice of maple. The only way around that is if they would have did a skunk stripe like Fender does on the back of the neck. So <laughs> I guess I can understand why. But here you can see where that fretboard ends and it joins onto the neck here. And, and this is another thing before we get the neck dimensions. They didn't even gloss the headstock. I feel like that's kind of a cop out because usually when Fender does like the satin back of the neck, even the satin fretboard, they'll still give that face that nice glossiness. That way it shows off their brand and everything. But I'm kind of preaching to the choir here because you got to remember, this is a signature guitar. I mean, PRS might have wanted to do all that other stuff, but at the end of the day, this is built to John Mayer specs. But this is my review and demo, and I'm going to give you my opinion on it as well. So this is a bone nut and it measures 1.64 inches. And by the 12th fret, we're rocking 2.04 as far as those dimensions go, but 0.9. That's what I've always liked about these PRS Silver Skies. They're pretty chunky. Yeah, it gets up to 0.97 by the 12th. That's what kind of makes it different from most Stratocasters. And I felt it was the best asset of that last one. But as far as the frets, we get 22 of them. And the maple fretboards, some people don't like this, that they, you only get the bird outlines. You don't actually get the true inlays. And this guitar uses the seven and a quarter inch radius. And we've got that familiar 25 and a half inch scale length. As far as the truss rod cover itself, it's just this dog tag looking like thing. It looks like it's a really lightweight aluminum or something similar. And here's what the truss rod itself looks like. And back to being all positive and everything, we get stock from the factory locking tuners. Basically, you, you pull them taut and then you use this. It's kind of like a fine tuner, but you put it all the way down, that locks it. So you're not fiddling around back here like locking Grovers or anything. And you get the plastic tips. Now, I get a lot of people that say, oh, I hate the plastic tips. Honestly, I like the plastic tips. They feel nice. Now, as far as QC, I am shocked that I found something wrong with a stock factory PRS because PRS is known for really good quality control. I'm really kind of bummed out about this. They don't have the finish all the way covering over there, so you can kind of see what looks like a chip. Now keep in mind, this was technically a used guitar when I bought it, but I doubt he dinged it up or anything. That looks like something that left the factory. And they probably didn't think too much about that because they thought the neck was going to cover it, so I'm, I'm a little bit let down about that. That's, that's definitely for sure, especially at the price point I had to pay. But as far as everything else, fantastic. But that was one small thing that I did find here. Now that we've got it all strung back up with some 10 gauge strings, let's go ahead and check out the back now. So stock from the factory, these do not get any type of plate over top of here. That way, if you need to do any fiddling back here, you can with ease. It also makes restringing a little bit easier. So you can see what's really different between this and a regular Stratocaster is just how much space you have right here. These are set up stock from the factory to just be down trims only. It's not floating, which personally, I'm okay with that. But if you're curious, yes, a magnet does stick to the block and that's a nice thick block. And it comes stock from the factory with four springs. And you can see the finish inside of here as well as the tremolo screws coming out the back there. As far as the rest, it's just a very basic S-type guitar here with your cutaway right there. And just in case you missed it earlier, they have that PRS swoop right here, which kind of looks cool on these guys. Especially when you get the uh, color changing, you know, that part's blue, the rest of it's kind of a purplish hue. Let's kind of take a second to take in this finish a little bit more. And here is our little neck plate here. Just read Silver Sky John Mayer model, limited edition one of 1000. Every single one says that. This is not number one, but it is one of the earliest ones released to the public. 
and thankfully we don't have any uh, cracks within the neck pocket at this time, but again, we do have that light finish chip that uh, you could choose to let that bother you, but honestly, do you ever see it while you play? No, but it is there if you're looking. But just take a look at the difference between this neck and that last one I had, the Nebula. You can see the cosmetic difference, but I like the wood grain that I have on this neck. That's pretty cool. But again, it's the satin finish. Satin finishes make it great and easy to play, so who knows, maybe you might find this to be a plus. Personally, if I was going to keep this really expensive guitar, I would take some polish and I'd really go to town to kind of turn this into a semi-gloss. That's what I personally like, so it just comes down to your own preferences. I'm not hating the guitar, it's actually a pretty good guitar. But between my first one and this one, yeah, I would definitely choose my first one. But here is our little scarf L joint that PRS uses on these guys. And the tuners, just as we've seen before, kind of cloosened in style. But check this out. Even though it's technically a 2021 model, it still has a 2020 serial on it. So this is one of those ones that was in the factory that all the workers were not allowed to talk about. You guys can't talk about these things. <laughs> All said and done though, this thing weighs seven pounds, two ounces. So with the bar while well, you're talking like seven, four, let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how this thing sounds. <laughs> Let's go ahead and run through the tones of this new Silver Sky. I've got to say, now that I've had it for a day, I'm kind of warming up to that whole satin feeling neck now that my hands aren't all dried out anyways. I would still slightly prefer a little bit more glossy, but I can see why people would like this. So I don't hate it as much as I did yesterday when I first unboxed it. So you just heard the neck pickup. It's nice and juicy. But then when you switch over to the bridge, it's a really bitey sound. However, normally I find these really bright bridge pickups work really well with distortion, so I'm kind of looking forward to that here. Now for our middle position. nice and spanky. Now we'll do neck and middle together. <laughs> I love that. And now bridge and middle together. Nice, let's go ahead and compare them in succession now. That way you can, you know, hear them back to back instead of just individually using the same kind of John Mayer-esque riff.
I think it's a really nice sounding guitar. I like it just as much as my last one. It really comes down to more so the neck profile and just what this thing inspires you to play. Like it doesn't, like it looks like a Stratocaster, right? But for whatever reason, it just inspires you to play more so like Mayer. I mean, I don't know every single one of his songs. I've just barely scratched the surface. But every time I pick one of these things up, it just makes me want to play. Basically, the only thing I don't like clean is the bridge. Let's go ahead and try it with some distortion, though. It's just like a, a blues rock machine, essentially. Yeah, this guitar is fantastic. It's just as good as that last one. It took a little bit to get used to the neck, but now that I've got it, yeah, I changed my mind. I do really enjoy this guitar. So is it worth paying crazy money for? That is only up to you to decide. So this year I thought we would get it a little bit earlier than all the rest of them. So ultimately, uh, what are some things to consider when purchasing this? I would tell you to keep in mind once again about the satin finish on the neck, you kind of need to play this thing in a little bit. Like if you just try it at the store and you go, ah, I don't like it, maybe actually take it home for a day or two, you know, within your return period and kind of just play it a little bit. It starts to feel normal again. But the other thing, it's just like the Nebula. This finish has a lot of static built up in it. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you'll see like little areas where dust has just been attracted to this guitar naturally by playing it. Yeah, here's a good example of that right there. But besides that, I mean, man, I love these Silver Skies. I think I maybe need to try one of the regular ones just so I know that it's not just the hype behind the finish that's making me love these things, but I think the pickups just sound absolutely fantastic. These are like strats, but they're different enough that it, you can justify owning one of each. So I'm really interested to see how I'll like the Fiore later in this year, because that's PRS's new Stratocaster style guitar, which is once again, another signature instrument. Will I be keeping this one? No, I really like it, but I paid too much. So I think I'll list it while the getting is good and maybe just hopefully maybe find another one a little bit cheaper later on down the road. Cause I really do like these limited edition finishes because I'm a super guitar collector and the hype is real and the market actually seems to be sustainable. Now these guys, you know, since there was a thousand of them, Here's what I'm predicting is going to happen. Prices are going to be very high, the few that ship out early. But I guarantee you only about 250 serious buyers bought these just for themselves. I think the other 750 were bought by scalpers. So you're going to see these things get flooded on the market. And that, my friends, is the time to buy because people will be competing. So if you want mine, yes, you're going to be paying a premium because it's the only one for sale at this point in time. So if money's no object to you and you're willing to pay for the privilege of having it before everyone else, sure, it's available. I'll just get one later on. But I'm sure you're curious about the whole case situation. So I bought a PRS case and a couple of Fender cases to compare them. Let's go ahead and see that. I mean, it's a pretty decent bag. It's not garbage. It's not absolute trash. 
It's got a zippered pouch on the outside. That's where the bar and truss rod adjustment tool and stuff is. We get a little thing that you can put some picks into. The interior, I'm really impressed that they thought of this. It's, it's a little bit annoying, but helps make your gig bag last longer. It's got some decent padding. It's got some bumpers. It's okay. But you're probably wondering, how much is a hard shell case? They're 200 bucks. But my last video, for some reason, I decided I would test if a Stratocaster would fit in the PRS case. And it does. It's a very tight fit. The strap buttons sometimes are a little bit of an issue. But I was curious, will a Silver Sky fit within a Fender case? I would hope so. Yeah, that fits fantastic. Fender cases generally have a little bit of wiggle room. Just in case you know your dealer doesn't have a PRS case in stock or you don't want to purchase them because they are ridiculously heavy. Like these are known for being really chunky cases. Actually, I want to physically prove this. I mean, this is just one of the uh, Fender made in China cases. Okay. This thing weighs 11 pounds. I think these are like 160 bucks. I'll put that up on the screen. Then you get your plastic TSA style one. That's a little bit lighter at 10 pounds, three ounces. And then our good old PRS case that doesn't have any branding or anything on it. I'm impressed. This one is not as heavy as my last one. So it's 17 pounds. You can still feel it's got some chunk to it, but I think PRS has definitely taken into consideration what some people are saying about their hard shell case, because this one feels a little bit lighter. I think that's new too. You get a little compartment in here. I wonder if they changed the fit at all. I mean, that, that just fits like a glove. I mean, this is definitely the superior case as far as fit. It's definitely going to protect your neck in multiple areas. But just for good measure here, let's make sure that actually fits this one too. <laughs> because I'm sure there's going to be somebody curious about all this stuff. Maybe you want a different interior. Yeah, I mean, this one moves around. If you're gonna get a case and you don't care about the weight, you're not lugging it around gig to gig, you just want something nice to store it in, definitely go for the real deal PRS. Now, if you're gigging, you might want to do the Fender one, but it does fit in all of them. So, Droglodytes, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the PRS Silver Sky Lunar Ice with me. Absolutely beautiful guitar, but at the end of the day, it's up to you which finish you like the best. Oh, and I just found out why PRS cases are so heavy right up here. Made in Costa Rica. The Costa Rican cases, even when Gibson gets them made there, they're always super heavy too. All right, troglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.